Calculus is often used to make predictions about how diseases spread through a population. In this video, we'll start looking at how to think mathematically about the spread of disease in a population. Let's imagine that there is a new disease going around called the one-legged R syndrome. After someone gets infected, symptoms start to appear over the next several days. These symptoms include having a tendency to swash while holding a buckler, being prone to using a flintlock and cutlass, having an irrational fear of a Dutchman, and finding that your timbers frequently shiver. This disease tends to last only three days, at the end of which most people revert to being regular people, or they sail away in search of gold, never to be seen again. Now, of course, this is a made-up disease, but the model you develop with it will be real. Our goal is to predict how this disease moves through the population. The way we start doing this is by splitting our population into three groups of people. The first group of people don't have the disease, but could catch it. We call them the susceptible group. The second group of people have caught the disease, and in our case, the disease involves turning into a pirate. We call them the infected group. The third group of people have either recovered from the disease and have some immunity, or, in some cases, did not survive the disease. We call them the removed group because they can no longer be infected. Now, let's think about what happens in the population. So here are all of the people in the population. Well, not quite all. There are only 224 pictured here, but this will be good enough to make sense of the situation. Let's imagine that five people are initially infected with the one-legged R syndrome, and everyone else is currently healthy but susceptible and nobody is quarantined, so everyone moves around. So people in the infected group can come into contact with people in the susceptible group. And, at the end of the day, some of those people who were healthy are going to become infected. And if another day passes, some more people will become infected. And after another day, even more will become infected. But then, since the infection only lasts three days, the people who were originally infected recover. Now, our goal is to predict how many people might be infected and removed on any given day. So let's think about how we might model this situation mathematically. Here are our three groups, and I'll simplify this picture a little, using S for the number of people in the susceptible group, I for the number of people in the infected group, and R for the number of people in the removed group. And then we can think about how individuals move from the susceptible group to the infected group, or from the infected to the removed. Now, to help our exploration, I'm going to make some things a little more precise. Specifically, I'm going to define four quantities. A quantity is something you can measure. In this scenario, the four quantities are the number of days since the first infection, which I'll write as T, the number of people in the susceptible population, which will be represented by the letter S, and I'll point out that this number changes each day. So S changes along with T, and I'll write this using function notation as S of T. I will be the number of people in the infected population. Like S, this quantity changes each day, so we can write I of T to indicate the relationship between I and T. And the fourth quantity is the number of people in the removed population, which, like S and I, we can write as R of T. Next, we should think about what factors affect S, I, and R the number of people in each group as the number of days increases. I'd like you to pause the video and write at least four things that might have an effect. What are some of the things you came up with? Here are some suggestions that other students have made. Focusing on how quickly the infected population grows, if there are more infected people, then the disease will spread more quickly. And similarly, if there are a lot of susceptible people, the disease will also spread more quickly. If the disease is particularly contagious, it will spread easily, and the number of interactions people actually have, or the effects of social distancing, will affect the spread of the disease. Focusing on how quickly the removed population grows, if people recover quickly, then the removed population will grow quickly, or if people have other health conditions that could slow their recovery. Similarly, if there is good health care or available treatments, then the removed population could grow quickly. 
Some other factors that students have suggested that aren't in our current model include states other than S, I, and R, such as being infected but non-symptomatic, or introducing additional people into the system. There could be different rules for moving between states, such as losing your immunity. The population might not be uniform, or the mixing of people might not be so perfect. And we could institute a quarantine. These could all be factors, and different models can take different things into account. In our model, we're going to keep things simple and not account for some of these other factors. We're going to lump things like healthcare into the overall recovery time. Also, we'll incorporate the effects of social distancing into the number of interactions that actually happen each day. So now we've considered this scenario of the spread of disease and how we might start thinking about it mathematically in terms of quantities.